most recently this week, you you kind of jumped off of your song that you released in February, What Are You Going to Tell Her? And you're doing this kind of like, what are you going to tell her campaign or challenge? It's called The Paper Challenge. And I wrote the song, What Are You Going to Tell Her? Because I had went to a Grammy after party here in LA. And this Grammys? Remember, yeah, this year. I wrote, what are you going to tell her this year? Oh my gosh. The day after the day after I went to the Grammy after party, that was a Sunday. I was in Nashville that Monday morning and I went to this party sober because mm -hmm. I've gotten sober. Mm -hmm. And I remember I looked around the room and there were so many beautiful women and very, very famous people. I should not have been in that room. And I remember my manager went to introduce me to um, a head of some streaming platform. And I was trying to get them to play. I was, we were going to send them Black Like Me because I had written Black Like Me last year. And I remember when it, we came to meet this head big wig guy, I like sat up straight. I like mm. batted my eyelashes and turned mm. it on. And I felt so like ashamed of myself. First of all, because my husband was standing back behind me, letting me do my business thing. And I was batting my eyelashes to this person to try to get an opportunity. And mm -hmm. it made me sick to my stomach. And I was so upset. And then it brought me back to Nashville and the discrimination against women in country mm -hmm. music, not just black women, but white mm -hmm. women, if we want to get real down yeah. to the nitty oh, gritty. Yeah. And I was just so sad, so, so sad. And I went to this writing session with that on my heart with three other women that are some of the most talented women, I think, in the world that are still being shut out of writers' rooms because they are women. And name them. It was oh Victoria Banks, Karen Kasowski, and Emily. Everybody yeah. used to write with these women. They just really get. They just get it. And we cried together. And we wrote this song. What are you going to tell her together? And when we finished it, I didn't even want to sing it. And they were like, Mickey, you have got to sing this today. Yes. And I couldn't even. I had to take several breaks. It just was too heavy. It was too heavy. It was too fresh. Mm. It was too fresh. And it just, when we got the song back, <laughs> I had to listen to the song about a hundred times before I could not cry to it. Mm. Yeah. Tell me about the other places in your life where you're taking ownership. Yeah. Right. Um, so when I started writing my music and, and the, the shift in my life before I even wrote black like me, I remember talking to my husband who's really, really, really smart. Like this guy got mm -hmm. accepted into Harvard law school and didn't go because there weren't enough people that look like him. And so I asked mm. him one night and I said, why do you think country music isn't working for me? Mm. And he said, he said, because you're running away from everything that makes you different. <gasps> and it was, it like, it gutted me for a second because yeah. it like, he checked me and, and I, I was able to receive it first of all. And That's remember, hard because you're already uh, brave. Like, it's not yeah. like you weren't showing up. Yeah. I was showing up. It's not up. like you weren't already fighting. Yeah. But he's but I saying was silently fighting. I was double down. Fighting. Yeah. And when he said that to me, I was just like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. I have literally been running away from everything that makes me different. And it's not just my skin color. Literally, mm. my whole entire being and my whole story and my whole life, I was running away from because I felt like that wasn't good enough for country music. Mm. And I Ooh, feel like so many, oh my of gosh. Us, so many of us do that. We, we run away from our truths because we're trying to fit in 
and make mm-hmm. everybody feel comfortable. And then what ends up happening is we get rejected that much more. Therefore, I was being, I was so used to being rejected. I didn't even know who I was anymore. Let's talk about black like me. Mm-hmm. I guess, I, you know, I want you to tell whatever story that you want. I'm curious about the places where you felt like you had to hide your blackness. Yeah. In country yeah. music or maybe, but, but maybe you want to take it somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. So the song Black Like Me was inspired by this book that I read in college called Black Like Me. I wrote down that title after I had that discussion with my husband when he said I was running away from everything that made me different. And that song literally is everything that I've gone through from a little girl up until now. Mm-hmm. I went to, I had to go to a private school when I lived in Waco, Texas, because the subdivision that I was supposed to go to, the, the public school system, it was made known to my parents that they didn't want black kids to go there. So then I went to private schools where I was still in school. There was the map of Africa pulled down and there was the word Niger in Nigeria. And a kid was calling Niger a different word. And mm-hmm. the teacher mm-hmm. never said anything for me and never stood up for me. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. when I got into country music, I was just so just trying to just be accepted. And I was called the N word at shows before I've been, I've had to sing in front of the Confederate flag. And instead of talking about it in interviews, I didn't talk about it. I didn't want to bring that attention to myself. And I wanted people to see me as an authentic country singer, not a country singer, a, not a black country singer. I wanted to be Mm -hmm. respected as just a country singer. And that was me hiding who I am. Where would you like to see the town and the industry come up to meet you where we haven't? I'm still figuring that out. Um, This is all very, very fresh and new. And I have seen a lot of people come out and actively say Black Lives Matter. But I've also, you know, seen people sort of kind of say Black Lives Matter with the Bible verse to kind of like cushion Mm -hmm. the blow. And it's like Jesus had nothing to do with Black people being oppressed and mistreated. Like, don't cushion the blow to your Mm -hmm. fans by saying that. Like, stand in it. Like, openly Mm -hmm. outwardly stand in it um it's it's very fresh you know and i think we're all kind of navigating and 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 time is really gonna be able to help me figure out what more i can say that the country music community can say right now it's just being openly anti-racist is like saying that racism is not accepted in this country if you see it if you hear it it's like absolutely not Go back to your cubby hole with that. You are not welcome here. When I wrote Heaven Down Here, I had just seen these. I just saw the Ahmad Arbery mm. video of him getting shot, hunted in broad daylight. Mm. Then hearing about Breonna Taylor, a, an essential worker, getting murdered in her own home. My Gosh, sister is beauty. a nurse, I mean, by the way. You know, it, yeah. it's, it's a horrible, yeah. and you know. And then there was George Floyd and whether people think he was a hero or a good person or not, like he was still fighting for his life and, and asking for help and nobody did anything. And I was, and then all the, the racial unrest and then the, the protests, I'm in downtown LA, the protests were walking right by my house. I was seeing Mm. it all. And it was actually really peaceful. Whatever they were showing on the news was not at all what I was seeing. So that's really? interesting too. But I was in this writing session. I had a writing session that day and I was an emotional wreck. And it was written with uh, Hillary Lindsay, Josh Kerr, and Gordy Sampson. And I hadn't been in a room. With them. I hadn't been in a room with them in like eight years. And um, like since when you were first new on the label? Since I was first. Yeah, yeah. New. Oh, wow. And so I an- answered that Zoom call sobbing to them. Yeah. 
like, I was like, what is going on? Like the world is burning down around us and it feels like my community is living their best lives and we're suffering. There's a pandemic. People can't buy food. My brother-in-law, by the way, just now got his stimulus check four months mm -hmm. later. So he hasn't been it's able heavy. to afford, like, just the yeah. world is just real life down. stuff, real life stuff. And I remember, uh, Josh was like, you know, the world, we, we just really need a little bit of heaven down here. And it Ooh. started from that. And it was just a question. And, and it was just like, I thought God had turned his back on me for so long. And it's almost like he's had his hand in my life this entire time evidenced yeah. by me writing a song called heaven down here yeah. and me having this like really push and pull relationship with God. It's really sometimes in your rock bottom is where you feel him the most. For and sure. that's what that song was. It was just like asking him a question. Like if you've got just a little bit of love left up there, please rain Give it, it down to me. on us. Please. Like yeah. we need yeah. it. Like the world is just, wild and on the loose right now so <laughs> and like and like in all of this wild and all of this terror and all of this just just craziness i think there is there's so much redemptive stuff moving and absolutely. there is like healing is actually possible because we're it all at least possible. everybody's awake now mm -hmm. and it's we can do things when we're paying attention. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely.